If you can consistently get over 10% uh, click through on a YouTube thumbnail, email me right now, Aaron at pipercreative.co. We will hire you, period, end of story. It is the holy grail of what you can be doing on that platform and is still immensely relevant. We go up against other video production firms that will charge twice what we will for a video and they won't deliver a thumbnail along with that video that they produced. It shows a lack of appreciation for what really matters. When, one thing I was looking at too with all of your content is when you grab a hold of, of a YouTube, I guess the way you guys did, you've grown a lot, I think over the last year. When you really started honing in on it, what were the actionable steps that you started taking to improve the, the user experience and to, get, to make it consumable? The way that I learn is by paying as close a freaking attention as I can to the people that seem to have figured it out already. So I wanted to figure out content marketing. You referenced VaynerMedia and Gary Vaynerchuk. I look at Emily Weiss from Glossier. I look at these type of characters and then I go listen to every single keynote that they've ever given, every single interview that they've ever done. So to that uh, effect, if you know anything about YouTube, you know that Mr. Beast is winning on YouTube right now. So I simply went and found the videos of him talking about how, what he knew about YouTube or people breaking down how he's done what he's done. And the thing that always comes back to is number one is video retention. And number two is your thumbnail. The two most important things when you produce a YouTube video are the thumbnail and the way that it's edited so as to create viewer retention so that they watch deep into the video and they don't immediately start it, wow, this is irrelevant and click away. By knowing that, we can differentiate our services and then simultaneously build this reputation for Piper, for me, for Hannah, for everyone that works here, as these experts. Personal branding is one of the ways that this is positioned. At the end of the day, it's your reputation. One of the easiest, lowest friction ways to pursue that is through activity on platforms like Twitter, like LinkedIn, like these other social networks. It's a great avenue by which to build your reputation, but at the end of the day, that's what you're doing. There's no resets when it comes to your personal reputation in life, particularly in a digital age where there's so many breadcrumbs that can follow you around the world. Like you have to guard that with the utmost ferocity. It is, it is the biggest point of leverage as you get further into your career, and it is the biggest point of potential um, friction or missteps to accomplishing the goals that you're after. I think that's something every single person can spend more time being considerate of. It does not mean that you have to be a content creator. It does not mean that you have to you know, be aspiring to be an influencer of some way, shape or form. But being a thoughtful curator of interesting information, being someone who uh, always you know, shows up on time, does a great job and builds your reputation through that means, it all makes a ton of sense and it's, it's candidly what I'm uh, pretty obsessed with personally and then hopefully trying to help other people do uh, both through my work and then through outlets like this. Training a team and, and just training yourself to be really adaptable, almost expecting change to occur and being super open to recognizing, hey, the thing that worked for us yesterday or last week or last month or last year isn't the thing that's working the best in the present and reallocating your resources, your skills, your efforts in that direction um, is, is another thing that can give you a huge advantage because most people just want to ride the same horse. They don't like change. They get stuck in their ways. They get, they get fat and happy off of, you know, building their entire reputation or model around a certain thing and don't want to see the writing on the wall that it's not got the same returns that it used to. Let's not, let's not gamble on one piece of content. Let's put out a lot of content and see what our consumers are actually interested in. You know, my co-founder, Hannah Phillips, she tells this fantastic story about when she was little and she's she does graphic design, videography, photography, all the creative stuff that actually makes us look and, and sound so good. And she also does uh, painting. And she was taking a class from a master painter when she was uh, in her young teens and was told to basically stop a painting that she still thought, you know, had 30, 40% to go and was told to just leave it there. You've done enough. And it ended up being like, you know, voted as the best piece of work in the, the subsequent show with all the other students. And so we just both kind of carry the same sensibility from very different backgrounds that we don't even necessarily know 
what the best expression of our work is. Like we're trying, we're always, you know, pursuing better. And I know that you want to talk a little bit about the Piper Rundown. The transformation in quality from November of 2019 when we started it to January 2021 today and what we produce, how entertaining it is, the design, the style, the presentation is exponentially better but we could have never gotten to where we are now if we hadn't taken so many bites at the apple so there's you're dead on that that we're not in any way shape or form uh overly uh self-indulgent or romantic about the quality of what we might be producing in the present we're really kind of seeing it as a gateway to unlocking the ability to do the fantastic transcendent piece of storytelling that we we have confidence is in our future uh, but we have to get those bites at the apple in order to have a chance of being able to make yeah, it. Yeah, there's so much here. The 150 pieces of content a week, the way that I would break that down is, so we've got about six videos that go up on the YouTube channel on a weekly basis. That's one podcast interview, I'm sorry, five. Uh, podcast interview, three episodes of the Piper Rundown, and one vlog episode, which can kind of go in any direction that we want it to. And then each of those pieces basically is responsible for another 10 to 20 pieces of content around that. That could be you know, a small clip for an Instagram story. That could be a uh, super short looped clip for a TikTok or an Instagram reel. That could be a, a headshot or a photo that could be used for promotion on Twitter. That could be used as a static image post for Instagram. Um, the Scaling of that content into more disparate pieces is something that if you're super online, if you spend a ton of time consuming modern content creators will seem very familiar. But to a lot of organizations around there and a lot of the people that are trying to figure out how to create leverage out of their time spent on a piece of content um, are not necessarily appreciating or spending their time on. Um, it is also not where we started. We probably started at 10 to 20 pieces of content a week and we've slowly uncovered how to scale that more efficiently. The first year of Piper, our big breakout was on um, on LinkedIn. We created some really, in, in hindsight, terrible videos that we published to LinkedIn. Uh, it did not have any form of a narrative, it did not have any title, it did not have cap, it had nothing. And yet, just because it was on the right platform at the right time, it had the distribution that got us in front of that decision maker. Um, and you know, that's something that we've ridden through late 2018, all of 2019, and into 2020 as a growth channel. LinkedIn is not quite as strong as it used to be, uh, but now we're seeing tremendous growth on TikTok. Our Piper Creative account, I think, is over 66,000 followers there. Um, and once again, I, I think we have nice content there. I don't think it's exceptional. I don't think that we're like, you know, genre breaking, but we are focusing there with, you know, our, our relative experience and our relatively higher quality gear than most of the creators on that platform, which is giving us that opportunity for growth.